Thanks for having me. One toke over the line, a modern spiritual. In the back seat of a car, listening to a radio station I couldn't control, I wondered what the singer meant by sitting in a railway station, one toke over the line. Later, underground on the subway platform, it comes back into my bowed head as a jangly rush, as I stare at the yellow painted line before the edge, right before the train goes past. There was a mood that once caught me when someone in the office made a crack about a jumper who delayed his commute, made him miss a meeting. Maybe not knowing what one toke over the line meant, Lawrence Welk called the song a modern spiritual. <laughs> the train for home is full of commuters in black with bowed heads. You can be snapped out of it by prayer or seeing faces of those you don't want to hurt or thinking you'd be a crack someone makes in an office. The train goes above ground, pink sunset over skyline. The sense of control and the lack of control dazzles equally. You know how hard the body fights back. American boy. I could have been an American girl raised on promises. At seven, desperate for red flats, Reeboks with red laces instead played petty on the piano for the July 4th picnic, grill smoke in the air. I spun out onto the lawn, yearning for my red laces to be pigtail ribbons. Some years later, Petty's song in the silence of the lambs, Brooke Smith singing along in the dark, patting the steering wheel, on her way to entrapment at the bottom of a concrete pit in the basement of Buffalo Bill. That deep voiced scarred face I never wanted to end up like. Tucking it in, prancing in the mirror with a boa. That same summer, my name shared with Dahmer. I read about him in time in the dentist office after all, it was a great big world with many people to run from. Freezer packed genitals, the boy who almost got away. <laughs> After Parasite, this is the new mo movie that just came out this year. Um, if you're able to push aside the weight of the shelf with your body and bone, the cave below the cave below is behind the wall. We pushed past people out the subway up the stairs to a man on a mattress spread. We walked past another man pulling down his pants in front of a mound of trash bags. In the city night, we stood in line for Parasite. The house in the film elicited a sense of comfort. The dark humor eased what could have been a harsher watch, what some critics call poverty porn. The laughter at the woman thrown downstairs, you laugh and you can't take it back. We were content in our dark room. I pictured the day above us, up beyond us, more news of slaughter buried in the muck of content. A boy in his headdress in the tent, his flashlight lit. Think about us, the girl in the movie said as lightning flashed across her face. Earlier that morning, the C-SPAN host had stared impartially at us. 
America can be fun. On the walk to work from above, the giant billboard screen blue M&M had winked at me. Once a professor said, never invoke the homeless in your poems. They didn't ask to be there. After Parasite, we take the train back late and push past people out the doors to a man power washing the bricked underground. We sleep on our mattress spread. I dream of a mass shooting in a restaurant. Before he opens fire, the man in camouflage getup waves me out. In the parking lot, through the window, I see you in a booth as he aims at you and you flinch. I wake to my racing heart at four in the morning, a roach wriggling in a glue trap. Why did I leave you behind? It will be a hard morning to shake. You sleep and I kiss your cheek and say so long for now. I find a way in the bluish light to push aside the weight of the night with body and bone somewhere in our city to find myself down the stairs in a cave below a cave behind a wall where I lie on a snowy hillside within a forest of skinny trees. Best Actress. I uglify myself, makeup, prosthetics, love handles grown. I wrap a kerchief over my fringe. I slap my girlfriend. I slap my son. I slap myself unhinged in front of golden curtain sliding glass in an empty ranch where a botanist shot himself. I will sell this house today. I will clip a rose and shoot a cop in the front seat of his Buick in a Florida wood. I will shatter dinner plates. I will roller skate to don't stop believing in acid wash under disco lights. Disco is the cure for my agony. I hold on to that feeling Giorgio Armani says, a well-maintained physique is a great business card. It's an antidote against the passage of time. I have grown a CGI nose, a belly, and I think I love myself. I can get slim for the gold gown, let the lights fly, let the clicks click. My name called, over here, look here, Hey, the test can be bombardment. The test can be abandonment. For the ordinary, maybe they can experience rhapsodies without swag bags. You like me? You like me hawking Boniva. You like me as a squeaky clean beach teen. You like me holding up union. You like me in the cemetery howling out why. You like me in my Mary Todd wig of braided buns. You like me by the pool in my house gown, legs crossed on the patio chair, time spread on stone. You like me alone, weeping in a shower as my wedding ring slips down the drain. You like me crying on the rotary phone, receiving the worst news. You like the isn't what it seems, the more shocking the transformation, the more daring, the more a child can dream to one day don a clay pocked forehead to melt in simulated rain. And this is my last poem I'll read. Angie. We worked in the bookshop on late afternoons, frizzy black hair, foul-mouthed, sometimes lips and teeth stained with wine, denim jackets and baby doll dresses. 
bringing back a stack of hardcovers read earlier in the week. At that time, she was pushing Faye by Larry Brown on the cover, A Sepia Sky and Empty Highway. I was young and dumb then and still dumb in the face of her knowledge now lost. If a customer was rude, she would be rude right back. She didn't have time for a jackass. Shades, bubbly water, cigarettes puffed in front of the store on the sidewalk. On her lunch break, she raided Plan 9 and brought CDs back. PJ Harvey a fave. I hear good fortune hurling itself at the end of every line. She made movements with her arms to mock Madonna's swim. She thought Gary Condon offed Chandra Levy and buried her in cement. The magazines came in and together we'd shelve them. Brad Pitt's wet, tan, torso, tight, baby blue pants on the cover of Vanity Fair. She also worked at a restaurant called Bamboo, slinging beers, plates of balsamic grilled chicken and risotto. We'd go bowling as a group. The most joyful bowler I've ever seen, stubbing out a smoke, rising to roll a bright orange ball to a strike. Lucinda Williams singing Everybody's Had a Few over the lanes. On the way back, we all sang along in a, parked car, in a packed car to the Rolling Stones' Angie. Mick enunciating the name as if to say ancient. The twang in our voices at ain't it good to be alive. It felt like a different type of living then. I wore a purple and blue ribbon a few days after 9-11 in honor of the victims. She said, what the fuck is that? It looks like a bruise. We chatted in her place on Grove, looking out the balcony at the sunlit row houses. She gave me her robin's egg blue hardcover French dictionary from her childhood in Iran. I told her I've always struggled with languages. I didn't tell her I brought wine to French in a coffee tumbler, too scared of what others thought, too scared to speak up. I wonder if anyone noticed the vinegary scent stained teeth. I would shuffle home to crash with music. There is more to say, but then again, this poem is starting to feel like a bruise. That ain't it time we say goodbye moment. In one of the last nights I'd ever see her, I was dressed for a party, thrift store platinum wig aqua dress with sequined aqua platforms. I pulled over to the sidewalk and rolled down the window and she snapped a photo with a yellow disposable camera and said, I looked like Marilyn, lying through her wine-stained teeth, a grin like no other. Before I drove away, she winked and turned back into the bamboo. Thank you again.